Hi, today we're talking about understanding how much your child can hear by looking at the audiogram and knowing what the speech banana is. So welcome and thank you to all of you in the replay watching, hey, or on YouTube. I'm Dr. Lilach Saperstein. I'm host of the All About Audiology podcast and I love explaining things so that you understand why we even talk about them. What is the point of the audiogram? Why do we talk about a speech banana? And how does it help us understand how much our child can hear, which then means we can explain it to people, such as explaining to the teacher what their needs are, or knowing how to talk to family members, knowing how to um, you know, advocate for your child because you have a good understanding of how much they can or cannot hear with or without devices, etc. So let's jump right in. The audiogram, first of all. The audiogram, I have some things to show you today. So the audiogram has two different things on it. From side to side are the different frequencies from low to high and going down is the decibels, how loud the sounds need to be before someone responds and says that they can hear them. So um, we've talked about this many times before but it's really, really important to know what an audiogram is and how to read your child's audiogram. And basically, the lower down on the audiogram, the more hearing loss there is from mild, moderate, moderately severe, severe to profound. And also, um, uh, it can show us the right ear and left ear. Our circles are the right ear, X's are the left ear. And there's also different configurations. So it might not be the same level of hearing loss at all the different frequencies. Frequencies are from side to side, like across a piano, from low to high. And so some of the sounds may have better or worse hearing than other kinds of sounds. And a very common kind of configuration is a sloping, um, a sloping hearing loss where there's better hearing in the lower frequencies and uh, more hearing loss in the higher frequencies. So that's just you know, a quick reminder of what the audiogram is. And when you have one like this, if you've ever seen one like this, it has this superimposed section that's shaded it's kind of in the shape of a banana, and that's where most of the sounds of speech are, conversational speech, you know, regular tone, um, not yelling, not screaming, just like if you would map out what a conversation between two uh, people with normal hearing would include, it would include sounds in this range. So there's a range because we're talking, you know, the amount that I'm talking, the volume, there are some sounds that are softer and some sounds that are louder. So there's like this whole section, this whole grayed out section of the loudness, right? How much dB up and down. And then across the frequency spectrum, it's showing that there's different. At the lowest and at the highest, it's a little bit um, quieter. And then in the mids, it gets a little bit uh, louder. Okay, so this is one way to do it. So if you were to come in and plot your audiogram or your child's audiogram onto this, which is by the way called a articulation, um, articulation Index, AI, and it's also called Count the Dots Audiogram because you have all these dots and you can see the spacing shows you which dots are more important or have more speech sounds in them. So it's more uh, spare, spread out and sparse over here and much more tight in the middle where the, the majority of speech sounds are. But really the idea is that their speech sounds cover the entire frequency range and a decibel range from softest sounds to the louder sounds. And so if you plot the audiogram, you can then have a count the dot, count the dots, <laughs> where you can see how many dots or what is the percentage, what is their articulation index. This is um, something that's much less used in, in um, counseling or clinical practice when you're in the audiologist's office. Much more likely you'll see something that looks like this, which is similar, and this one is called the speech banana. So this is, you know, that banana shape. But you'll see lots of different types. In fact, I got a question about this from one of you guys, and you asked, you know, I see on one speech banana printout, I plot it and, and my child's hearing is within the banana and another one it's outside of. So what's going on? Is the banana moving based on like who puts out the audiogram? Well, see, the thing is that it's really an average or a range of conversational speech. And you know that some people 
just tend to have a louder voice overall. So if I took a recording of this person and then mapped it out on an audiogram, I'd say their speech banana for a particular passage was maybe on average a little bit louder. And another one was maybe a, a laboratory setting or, or maybe it was children and children have higher pitch voices. So my point is, it's basically an on average, in general, a rough estimate of where the sounds of speech are in regular day-to-day -day life. And not only that, but some of these audiograms, they have pictures of different kinds of sounds, like a super loud airplane is both very loud, so it's at the bottom, and very high frequency as opposed to the lawnmower, which is also, you know, towards the bottom, it's very loud, but it's low frequency rumble. And so you'll have, you'll have some with birds and some with watches. And it's kind of funny to have a piano because the whole idea is that the piano can be as soft as a feather or as loud as banging on it and has all the different frequencies, right? Um, from all the keys across the piano. But I guess that's why they just kind of put it there. Maybe an average musical piece is kind of around there. So you can start to understand what are the, um, you know, the thoughts behind making s these kinds of audiograms that you can then overlay or, you know, come and fill in your child's audiogram to get a sense of what they can hear and what they can't. And I want to also point out the sound, the letters. So you've got low frequency sounds on the left side, right? So we've got M and O, J. B, these are all much lower frequency than sounds like s, f, f. Those are the super high frequency sounds and usually the ones that are the hardest to hear. And so if you can take this and um, put in your child's audiogram on top of it, and then also if you ever have a hearing test where they do a hearing test with their devices, either with hearing aids or with cochlear implants to see how much gain they're getting out of it, um, then you can also see how hopefully those results come higher up on the audiogram and are coming in um, you know, below, as in quieter than, but above on paper, um, the, the, the speech banana so that they have access to those sounds. So a little bit of a technical explanation for you today, but I do love the idea of you know when you understand it, when you can explain the audiogram, what it means, what are all the, what does this way mean, what does this way mean, how do I put my child's hearing onto this, and then you're able to also explain it and see, hey, you know, that's why, maybe it will be an explanation, for example, of a child who answers when I call their name. They have awareness of sound. They'll hear when I say, Johnny, they're hearing me, they turn around. But then when I give, when I give specific words, like, um, I'm just trying to think of a TH word and the first one came to my mind was thimble. So <laughs> if you say thimble and they don't have the TH access to that sound at regular conversational volume, then, then they might say imble or timble, right? And change that word up. I don't know why that's the word that came up to me. I could have said throat or hmm, think. Anyway, I think you get what I'm saying. That's already where our amazing speech language pathology colleagues come in where they really break down the different parts of speech and there's an important collaboration that goes on between your audiologist and your speech pathologist and this is part of why because we want to know what is your specific child's hearing so that we can then know what is the specific um, discrimination tasks that we can do different wording games that can help them to hear and understand better so I hope this was helpful for you. Part of what, um, hi, um, I'm almost finished here. We're just talking about audiograms. And so part of what we're doing within the Hope Beyond Hearing program is explaining your specific uh, child's audiogram. And we do a session on that and also lots of other tools for understanding and becoming really, really knowledgeable and able to then help your child as much as you can. For more information, check the link in the description, allaboutaudiology.com slash hope. Thanks for listening. Bye.